It's a bonanza. It could be short-lived. Nobody knows quite how much oil is out there. We look at oil as um, a second opportunity being given to this country. There is already quite a, a bit of uh, uh, pressure on the government to make a big splash. I want to go straight to our government to let our government know that they have to work with the people. Well, it was back in uh, 2007 that news reports showed that Ghana had made a world-class oil discovery. The true scope of the size of the field wasn't exactly known, um, but it was clear from that moment on that Ghana was soon to join the ranks of Africa's oil producers. Once oil comes into production, it's likely that uh, the incomes of Ghana will be raised by about 20%, and the tax revenues will be anywhere between 5 to 6% of GDP, and that is quite substantial uh, given the uh, financing needs that Ghana has right now. <laughs> 2008 was not just the difficulty with the global crisis. We also have very, very serious difficulties. In fact, matter of much more serious difficulty in terms of the internal management of our own domestic economy. 2008, coincidentally, was an election year. And in our part of the world, electioneering comes along with what you call complete uh, lack of fiscal discipline. By the end of the year, there's a record budgetary deficit uh, pushing towards 20%, and there was a record trade deficit also pushing towards 20%. So given those difficulties, we had no option but to resort to the fund I mean, for support. So in terms of stability, the fund then came in. So the IMF has been quite important to Ghana for a long time. That relationship has had its difficulties uh, and also some uh, smooth uh, paths. It sometimes also led to the adoption of programs that were never very popular, but in the end there is no argument about whether Ghana needed the fund or not. The total financing package amounted to slightly over one billion United States dollars. And in terms of the technical assistance, the fund has been able to increase the amount of technical assistance that it has provided to Ghana. The IMF's view was it came into Ghana to ask the Ghanaians what they wanted or to ask the government what they wanted. It's far less conditional than the, the sort of funding Ghana had in the 1980s. The situation was very different. What the government of President Mills inherited in 2009 was a troubled economy, but it was by no means an economy on its back. Given the broad experience that the fund has had in, in advising sub-Saharan African and other countries uh, on the management of the oil wealth, we think we can bring best practice to Ghana's benefit. I should say that Ghana has been actually quite eager to learn from experiences of other countries. Dependence on raw materials or depends on natural resources uh, per se does not bring about the transformation of economies. In spite of the huge gold reserves that we've had, we've not been able to attain the levels of economic transformation that we, we so much long for. There's no point in having oil if your average Ghanaian can't have education. There's no point in having oil if Ghanaians can't go to hospitals and get good health care. There's no point in having oil if uh, young mothers are going to be dying uh, in large numbers from uh, uh, trying to uh, have children. So the first challenge is how do we transform the national economy so that there's value addition and we can earn more to run the economy and that we can improve the standard of living of citizens, improve their skills, build social capital, education, water, health, improve the infrastructure. So it will be very important for the government of Ghana to identify investments where they expect high risk of return, so that even after the expiry of the oil production, right, these investments will continue generating high returns going forward. If it's done right, oil revenues can really seed the non-oil economy. We need to have a complete reorientation in terms of our mindset and understanding that much as we have natural resources, 
the greatest resource that we need to ask you to focus on is a human resource for our people. One of the debates in Ghana right now is how can more Ghanaians become involved in the oil sector? And it's often labeled the local content debate. I started this project because I believe that young people must be empowered so that this new industry, this new oil and gas industry that is coming to us here, they will be employable. I am a mechanical engineering by profession, but I need, before I can get access into the oil and gas industry, I need to be trained. Drilling. Drilling. Okay. Oh, Ocha. If you empower people, they become useful citizens. If you leave them, they become a problem to everybody in the society. We have a lot of youth in our area, and we want to plead to the whole nation and then the government that we should employ the youth in our area there. We are a, a developing country. We are a relatively poor country, and people cannot wait to move away from poverty and underdevelopment. So you cannot fault anybody for being expectant. You are getting the same across all regions. The way to go about it is to engage much more in educating, in, in, in letting them know that uh, we can have an overnight transformation of the condition of all our people. It has to be a gradual process. We've invested in, in uh, significant outreach in the last few months uh, to, uh, to explain some of these issues, uh, uh, government efforts in that regard. We, of course, are listening uh, to the concerns of the public. Oil is a non-renewable resource, right? We don't know how long Ghana will be an oil producer, so it is important that the non-oil sector is not ignored. I think one of the priorities for investments from oil revenue should be in supporting uh, small-scale agriculturalists. Agri is the mainstay of the economy, it employs most people and most people rely on that for their livelihoods and it contributes the largest portion to GDP. Agriculture in Ghana has moved from fully subsidized agriculture through partial subsidy to a point where farmers had no subsidy at all. We need fertilizer, we need money to till the land first and then we need the seedlings which we can nest so that we transplant. And the money is the most important because without money, you can't purchase the fertilizer, the chemicals, which you have to spray. So if we don't have access to credit, there's no way we can really adopt the, gener the technology we are trying to push. So I believe that uh, access to credit is, is really a key if we want to, have, to, to develop the, the Ghanaian uh, agriculture. In other countries where we've uh, worked on the oil issue, we've seen that the agricultural sector has, has dried up. And certainly, you want to be able to manage your economy so that oil, which produces very few jobs, is not affecting the sectors of the economy that are actually employing people and keeping people out of poverty. Normally, when there's an oil boom, the tendency is maybe to even ignore the soft commodities sector like the cocoa sector. But we are putting in place certain uh, interventions to make sure that this doesn't happen. The oil may come, but we still need to protect our life, our traditional way of life. Everywhere you go, the Ghanaian will tell you, we want, we want transparency, we don't want any corruption, we don't want the revenue, oil revenue to be used um, according to the whims and caprices of people who are in government. We've certainly worked with the Ghanaians in terms of improving public financial management and giving an opportunity to both parliament and to a civil society more generally to understand the budget and to understand exactly what resources uh, are going where. I think the aim was for Ghana to be a middle-income country by 2020. It's technically doable but it's going to require a really determined and disciplined government to, to deliver that. 
if it is that we can do that, we anticipate that oil will become a catalyst that can bring about the transformation we are looking for. And maybe we then can become the kind of positive example and that could inspire Africa. Mm -hmm.